All right, we'll continue on with availabilities. We are now joined by Martin Truex Jr., driver of the number 78 Furniture Row Visser Precision Chevrolet. Martin, you're heading into Texas with two races left before we trim the chase field to the championship four at Homestead. What's your outlook today and this weekend here at Texas? How it looks the same as it's been, just uh, you know, do our job and uh, try to focus on getting good results. So I had a good weekend last weekend, you know, got fortunate with some of the things that happened and uh, had a solid day. So good start to uh, good start to this round for us and uh, you know next two tracks should be uh, should be good for us so uh, looking forward to these and uh, you know felt like for this round Martinsville was probably our biggest challenge and we made it through there pretty good so uh, looking forward to you know like I said uh, Texas has been a really good track for me over the years um, we weren't that great in the spring race we need to get better so uh, hopefully uh, you know guys are excited about the car they brought and uh, and what they got working on so uh, looking forward to seeing what we got and go from here. All right, we'll go ahead and open it up to questions. We'll start with Lee Spencer and then George Diaz. Lee Spencer, Motorsport.com. You witnessed what went on last weekend at Martinsville, and I'm sure you've seen many replays. Can you ever imagine a point where it would get to you and you would retaliate to the level that Matt Kenseth did on Sunday? I'm not sure. I haven't been in that position yet, so I guess we all have our breaking point. And uh, you know, obviously he was at his, so uh, no idea to be honest. I mean, everything's escalating in the chase. It seems like each week, you know, there's more in the line. Every position means more each and every one of these races, and it's just uh, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, I guess. <laughs> all right, we'll go to George and then Daniel. Yeah, Martin over here, George Diaz with the Orlando Sentinel. Along the same lines. Uh, as a driver, do you feel you have clarity in what constitutes hard racing and what crosses the line at this point? Yeah, I think so. Did that, I'm just trying to get a little bit more. Is there I don't really have a whole lot about, you know, to say about it. I mean, I think I know, but, um, you know, I'm All not right. sure. All right, we'll go ahead and go to Daniel. Daniel McFadden, in, uh, NBC Sports. Um, we're, we're, we have three races left with Jeff Gordon in the Sprint Cup Series. And I was wondering, do you remember the first time that you raced against him uh, on the track? And also, what's your favorite memory of racing against him? Oh, it's a good question. Um, I don't remember the first time I actually raced him. I do remember the first time I passed him for a position. And, uh, you know, that was one of those things where you're like, wow, that's, you know, this is really cool to, to be racing and, and to be passing, you know, Jeff Gordon. And, uh, you know, it's just obviously, you know, he's done so much in his career. It was, I was, um, I was really happy to see him win, to see him win last week. I thought it was really cool to, uh, you know, two, three races to go and he's, and he's back in victory lane. It's, it's to think about the fact that he's retiring still is, is hard, to, hard to believe, but, um, such a great competitor. Um, in that first year, I believe it was at, uh, it was at Atlanta. Uh, my first season where I, where I passed him for the first time. I thought it was pretty awesome. All right, we'll go to Bob and then Pat. Uh, Bob Pockers, ESPN. As far as we can remember, we've never seen a driver get suspended for something on track for uh, retaliation. Will that make any difference in what drivers do? Or is if you feel like you've been wronged, you're still going to try to do something to make up for it? I don't know, Bob. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's hard to comment. You know, you get kind of caught up in the moment sometimes. You know, I've, I've done things that I regret before on the racetrack and, you know, never uh, got me in, in, a, in a position like, you know, what we've seen this week. But, um, you know, I think that, that the, I guess the implications aren't really clear on how things work and, you know, what kind of trouble you could get yourself into. And I think that it'll be, um, you know, racing is racing. Guys have wrecked each other since racing started, okay? I mean, that's not going to change. Guys get mad all the time. You know, I think that people will go about it differently now because of, you know, what happened this week for sure. Um, how far that goes, I'm not real sure. We'll have to wait and see. All right, we'll go to Pat and then Chris. Pat Nicole and NASCAR.com to your left, Martin. Uh, for whatever reason, maybe kind of because of the craziness we've seen all chase, you're kind of flying under the radar, I guess but you're in great position. Is that underdog role kind of something you embrace, or do you wish that, like, 
you got more attention and people were talking about you more as like a title contender, even though you are? Well, I mean, there's uh, there's two sides to it. You know, I, I really enjoy the, the underdog role. It's really cool, and I, I think you know, for a lot of reasons, if you look at our race team, we are an underdog. You know, um, I've never been in a, in a championship battle in this series. Um, I've got a rookie crew chief. We're you know, single car team in Denver. There's a lot of reasons why we really do fit the the mold of a you know an underdog. But at the same time, I get frustrated sometimes because I feel like you know what we've done this season. Um, gets overlooked and it's you know I think people have short memories you know we were second in points in the summer and we've had a really good season so I at there's a lot of times where I'd like my team to get a lot more credit than they have um, sometimes I'd like to get a little more credit as a driver but you know at the end of the day that's not what really matters what really matters is us coming out here and doing our jobs and um, you know for us it, it's it's really all about our expectations of ourselves, and, and we're going to be disappointed if we don't perform at the level we know we're capable of. So, um, you know, we got three to go. We'll just, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. We're having fun with it, and uh, hopefully we can get the job done to, to the best of our abilities. All right, we'll go to Chris and then Jay. Chris Knight, catchfence.com, straight down the middle, Martin. Um, a lot of things going on on Furniture Row Racing. Obviously, you guys are in the chase, and then next year the big move to Toyota. How's the team handling all the different projects that's going on with the organization? Uh, things are going smooth. The guys are, are you know, excited about uh, what's coming up, but obviously staying focused on uh, on what we're doing. I think it's important for us to, you know, to finish out these three races before we get too far down the down the line of of switching things over and, and even worrying about what we're doing next year. So I think everything, all the stuff that we have to do in the off season, I think, um, you know, all the changes that they're going to have to make. The wheels are a little bit in motion on that, but it's kind of, you know not really started to progress because of you know where we're at in this situation so um, right now it's it's all in on this year focused 100 percent we've got a brand new car here that they built and uh, you know really just you know putting every effort they can into getting the best out of these last three races and then we'll go from there all right we'll go to Jay uh, Jay Pennell Fox Sports uh, you were ninth here earlier this year I think you have an average finish of like ninth throughout the chase races is that good enough to get to Homestead or do you guys need to improve or score a win to, to get in that final four? I don't think that's good enough. I think we'll, we'll need to improve for sure unless, you know, we have some crazy stuff happen again in the next two weeks, which, you know, is highly likely. You know, I think for us it's just, a you know, I, I don't think nine will be good enough. Um, I also think there's, you know, almost every race in the chase besides Martinsville and Talladega, we've run better than we finished. We need to change that. Um, if we can, you know, finish – the way we've been running, I think we'll be in good shape. Uh, you know, like I said, Texas and Phoenix, two good tracks for us. Uh, we tested out in Phoenix a month or so ago, and we were really fast. So looking forward to that one. And uh, we'll definitely have to step it up. And it's just a matter of really not making mistakes and uh, getting everything we can get out of the day. All right, we'll finish up with Jerry. Uh, Jerry Fraley, mm -hmm. Dallas Morning News. Martin, on the subject of Jeff Gordon, you know, he's the sentimental favorite people in the seats. Drivers such as yourself have expressed admiration for his, what he's done. But... At some point, you have to turn the switch off and remember, you know, it's your job to beat him and everybody else and don't cut him any breaks. Don't, in a sense, pull back just to let him have that kind of finish. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's, you know, that, that comes without saying. I mean, we all want to beat him. <laughs> it's nice to see him win, but he got his, and now it's time to, uh, it's time to turn it up and shut him down. So um, he's had, uh, he's had a, you know, an awesome career, like I said, and uh, it was really neat to see him let, win last week. But when you're on the racetrack, it doesn't matter who you're racing. You know, it um, doesn't matter who they are or what they've done, you want to beat them. So um, it's just second nature on the racetrack. All right, Martin, thanks for joining yep. us, and good luck tomorrow, Thank you. Sunday.